My name is Cindy Edward. I'm here at Cancer Treatment Centers of America in Atlanta, and I'm the supervisor of the respiratory department. Today, we're going to have a little chat about uh, breathing techniques and more specifically shortness of breath and some symptoms that you can experience going through uh, cancer and cancer treatment diagnosis. First, we're going to look at some causes of shortness of breath. Cancer and its treatment may cause shortness of breath or feeling of not being able to catch your breath, sometimes referred to as breathlessness. This is also called dyspnea. Sometimes you can become short of breath quickly and it can be quite frightening. Other times it can be mild and bothersome when doing daily activities. When people have in short trouble breathing, the body might not be getting enough oxygen because the lungs can't take in enough air or the body can't get enough oxygen through the bloodstream. So this is why you sometimes it might be you're feeling tightness in the chest, or sometimes you might feel you have a headache, or just inability to do your regular daily activities. So what to look for when you know, you're having these symptoms? Symptoms of shortness of breath or feeling of shortness of breath trouble breathing when resting, eating, talking, or with exercise, chest pain, faster breathing, faster heartbeat, wheezing. How does this, uh, these symptoms materialize in your common thinking? Well, you will, may not know all these terminologies, whether you're having shortness of breath, whether it's chest pain, but if you're having an inability to do your normal daily activities, something is going on. So it is important that you stop and focus on what is occurring. Is it chest pain? Is it, oh my goodness, all of a sudden I'm breathing faster and faster? Or you feel a high pitch sound when you take a breath in, that's called wheezing. So be careful and pay attention to what your body is telling you. Different causes of shortness of breath. People with cancer can have different causes of shortness of breath. That might be how you are um, experiencing these um, symptoms right now. It could be a tumor in, in there or in the lung other lung or breathing disorder. It could be something from a history of long history of smoking. It could be side effects of cancer treatment, such as surgery, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, or radiation. Fluid in or around the lungs or heart, pain, stress, or anxiety, pure, poor nutrition, so let's talk a little bit about stress and anxiety and why this can cause you shortness of breath. Well, for example, when you're anxious, your breathing gets faster. And the more faster you breathe, the more the increase of shortness of breath occurs because two things are happening at the same time and they're colliding together, okay? You're anxious and then you're short, short of breath. And the more anxious you come is the more short of breath you come. Then other symptoms will come up. You might start feel tightness in your chest. All of this is associated with anxiety. So focus at this time, focus on what you're doing, what is occurring and stop and try to get your breathing under control. We're going to look at some other things about lung cancer. So 
Here is some information. In the United States, lung cancer is the second most common cause of cancer, okay? It's also leading cause of death from cancer. So if you're the individual who have lung cancer, shortness of breath might become something that you are become more familiar with. Why is this occurring? If the lung is found at and early, if lung cancer is found at an early stage, when it is small and it can be, you know, can be treated early, then you have a better chance of survival according to the studies that's out there. So don't, first try not to panic because when you panic, this is how you increase the potential of other symptoms to occur. So breathing is very important. It's very important and it's essential to everything that you're going through with any kind of cancer diagnosis, especially if it's lung cancer. So it is very important that you stay calm, you rest, you control your breathing, you think about what's going on, your environment and everything like that, and then proceed from there. So when you're having a challenge with breathing, when you're having a challenge with going through treatment for lung, lung cancer, you need some assistance. And it's called assistance for daily living. And these are just some techniques that you have to adapt and you have to try to, to minimize certain symptoms. So we're gonna look at what you, the patient, can do. I said it before, you stay calm if you're experiencing shortness of breath. Sit up or raise your upper body to a 45 degree angle by raising the bed or using pillow. Why should you do this? Because you're trying to put your body into a position of improving your diaphragm, improving the area of have air moving in and out of your lung. So when you put your body upright in a position, that means you change the dynamics of the, of the lung arrangement. Take medicine. Your doctor may have prescribed you um, something like an inhaler or a nebulizer where you put a medicine in there and you breathe on it because to release some of these symptoms. You want to do that. You also want to practice something that's called personal breathing. What this is, it's where you, as you are sitting in that upright position, you breathe, take nice big breaths in through your nose. You count to two, one, two, and then you breathe out slowly by pushing that air out. This brings your body into a rhythm of understanding how to slow your breathing down. Because what's going on is you're short of breath, you're breathing fast, you're panicking because you can't get enough air. And it's, it's a cycle that goes on and it just compounds what is occurring. If you're still not breathing easier after five minutes, you want to continue. Now you, if you're in the bed, now you want to sit on the side of the bed, place both feet on the ground and continue your deep breathing exercise and try to maintain a rhythm where you're, you're breathing in deep and breathing out slowly. What it, caregivers can do, so you have other family members, maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a, it's a child or some other caretaker would so now they can encourage you, they can assist you with the breathing technique, they can assist you with getting the medication. If you've been prescribed oxygen, you want to be using that. Remind them to breathe in slowly and deeply and then exhale slowly. If after about 20 minutes or so, you, you're still not relieved, you're taking your medication, you've been practicing your breathing, and none, not, nothing has changed. 
and you're feeling worse, if the symptoms progress and you're feeling worse, you want to make sure that you call 911. Okay, that's the um, emergency number. And then you will explain to them what's going on to get extra support, extra help in a shorter period of time because the shortness of breath progress longer, you can incur other symptoms, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're not delaying care, but you, you as a caregiver is absorbing, ab absorbing your um, uh, person that you're taking care of and you're making sure that you're following along the guidelines, you're giving them the oxygen, you're giving them their medication, you coach them through the breathing techniques, none of which is working. Now you need extra support, okay? Remember, the primary concern is you, your health. Your health matters. If you're, you're having your regular visit at the cancer treatment center, you're having your regular oncology visit, and you want to make sure that you let them know what has been going on when you're not there. What has been going on? If this is something new, you want to let them know that you, now you're having some shortness of breath. They may not know that you know these things are occurring if you don't tell them. So your health is the primary concern right now. So you might be trying to deal with it at home where you start avoiding some of your regular activities. You don't want to do that because you're not fixing the problem or you're not addressing the problem. You're just compounding it, okay? So very important that your health is, is, is your primary concern. So when you're going through treatment, if anything changes with your breathing, if anything is different, if now you were able to go and, you know, make your breakfast and you, you're not able to do that, that's a change. If you were able to, you know, do the laundry, now you're not able to do that. But when you, or if when you're doing these things, you feel like you're having a higher degree of breathlessness. Those are things that you will communicate to your care provider. If you have symptoms that could be lung cancer and you're not seeing a doctor, make sure that you see a doctor right away. Thank you so much for this time. I hope that something that we have said here today might make a difference in your life, your family life, and uh, best of health to you as you continue on this journey with your lung treatment. Have a great day.